want to build a- Ooh, let's play! Hello YouTube, Sharp Helms here bringing you a new episode of Do You Want to Build a Let's Play? We're starting off with a pretty quick and simple topic today, and that's resolution. This is likely a topic that most people know quite a bit about already, and as I said, it's pretty simple, but it seems like the most logical place to start, because if you aren't getting resolution down properly, everything else you do to your videos will be more or less in vain. To explain resolution, we need to get an obvious fact out of the way early. Screens come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. That fact is the exact reason that resolution needs to exist. If there wasn't a standardized metric for this sort of thing, all content would need to be created for all screens and it'd be impossible. So let's just work with this one TV for now, and I'll explain later how exactly it can work with all of them. Also, I'm going to be referring to TVs a lot during this. Just so you know, computer monitors, phones, tablets, all of it works more or less the same. So, what exactly is resolution? Resolution at its core defines the number of pixels that are displayed by measuring the width of the frame multiplied by the height of the frame. For example, an HD resolution would be 1920 by 1080. To keep it nice and simple, the more pixels you have, the larger the resolution you have. So, for this 1080 resolution, we have a total of 2,073,600 pixels. To say that is clearly a pain, which is why resolutions are basically never referred to by their total size. Because resolutions work with pixels, we've moved out of the realm of physical size and into the realm of digital size, which is exactly what we need to allow multiple different TV sizes to display the same image correctly. A television is built using an array that can display a certain amount of pixels. To keep with our example, a, an array of 1920 by 1080. If you buy that same television in 32 inch, 42 inch, and 60 inch, you will get the same number of pixels in your array so the image will always display up to 1080. This is because pixels aren't a fixed size, although many believe that to be the case. Their size depends on the screen in which they reside. As we discussed, the same number of pixels appear on a variety of screen sizes. To do this, they either make the pixels larger on larger TVs or space them further apart. From close up, this effect would be pretty easy to see, but from far away, as you'd be sitting with a large TV, you won't see the difference. To show this, I made an array of pixels inside Photoshop, 16 pixels wide by 9 pixels high. I then drew an arrow in the middle so that we have a visual reference. To show a difference in screen size, what I'm going to do is zoom the image out, thus creating a smaller screen. Obviously, our arrow looks smaller because our pixels themselves appear smaller. The resolution hasn't changed though, it's still 16 pixels by 9 pixels. Changing the screen size just affects how they look. So what does this all mean? Probably not much because all you'll ever really see is the resolution number. What I wanted to explain before we get into those is what those numbers actually mean and how they work. With all that out of the way, let's look at some common examples. We'll stick with widescreen resolutions for now since aspect ratio is coming in a later episode. Quick note, the resolution of this video is 1920 by 1080 so while the resolutions on the following screen are accurate representations of scale to each other, they don't represent the actual sizes. First off, we have our tiny little 480, 854 by 480. There are resolutions smaller than this, YouTube even offers them, but for the sake of this example, we aren't going any smaller than that. Next up is 720, which is 1280 by 720. This is the smaller of the two HD resolutions. Believe it or not, this is what most HD television is broadcast in, as the bandwidth required to send full 1080 signals is expensive, and a lot of broadcasting companies haven't upgraded. After that, we have, of course, 1080, which, as we already said, is 1920 by 1080. This is sometimes called Full HD, and has more or less been the filmmaking standard for years. Even if shows are broadcast at 720, they are often delivered to the broadcaster in 1080. Next up is 1440, which is 2560 by 1440. The naming convention has been pretty obvious up to this point. This one isn't used a lot for web or TV content, but is often a resolution used by PCs that can push greater than 1080 but can't quite handle what's coming next. For that reason, it's mostly used for things like video games, and you could record in it, but it's not necessarily recommended. Now we're into the big boy resolutions, sometimes referred to as Ultra HD. This is what those fancy new televisions barely anyone can afford are coming out with. The mainstream one right now being this guy, 4K or 3840 by 2160. The naming is kind of tricky on this one because it gets called so many things. On the consumer market, as I said, it gets called Ultra HD or UHD. On the film side, we usually call it 4K. On the internet, it's sometimes deemed 2160. All of those refer to the same thing. 
The reason the name changed isn't entirely clear, but I believe it's mostly to showcase its size. As I said, 1080 has been more or less the standard for years. However, 4K has four times as many pixels as 1080, which is where the name comes from. It also has a horizontal resolution of more or less 4000 to make the name easier. After 4K, we're getting into the really big resolutions. These are resolutions that haven't hit the consumer market aside from prototypes yet, because the arrays are simply too expensive. However, cameras do shoot in them if you get the right ones. First one is 6K, 6144 by 3160. As I said, 1440 was more or less skipped by television manufacturers, and this one will likely be the same, as people won't see a large enough size difference to justify the money. However, very high-end cameras like the Red Dragon we use at work do shoot in this resolution, so it was worth mentioning. Last on this list, we have the biggest of the big boys, 8K, which is a whopping 7680 by 4320. As far as I'm aware, only seven cameras in the world can shoot this resolution, and there's definitely no TVs available to buy that display it. So, what does this all mean to the average person making content? Generally speaking, you want to shoot at or above what you'll be delivering your files as. As I mentioned, at work we shoot in 6K and deliver our files as 1080 to be broadcast at 720. The reason for this is because when a larger image is downscaled, it keeps much of its original detail. Therefore, we shoot more than we need in order to deliver the best quality. If we shot in 720 and delivered in 720, then the image would look good, but it wouldn't look as good as it can. The same applies to anything else. If you want your video to be 1080, you need to shoot it in at least 1080, but preferably above if you can manage it. Same for anything else. What you never want to do is blow your image up to a larger resolution just to get the number. If you shoot in 720 for example, but want a 1080 resolution, you'll need to enlarge your image. Let's hop back into Photoshop to show this. This image is 1920 by 1080. What I did was drop it into a canvas that's 1280 by 720 and resized it to fit, effectively downscaling it. As you can see, the difference in quality is barely apparent. Even if I zoomed in, you wouldn't see it. However, if I take this image that's now 720 and upscale it back to 1080, what you would get is this. The quality difference might not be immediately apparent, so let me zoom it in for you. As you can see, the detail is getting lost because the image was enlarged. If you shoot in 720, then make your delivery files 720. Upscaling will only get you a more impressive looking number and a less impressive looking video. So that's going to do it for today's episode of Do You Want to Build a Let's Play? Resolution is a topic that's relatively simple once you get it, but slightly more complex under the hood, so I hope I helped some of you understand it a bit better. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe for future ones, and feel free to leave a comment with any content you'd be interested in seeing. For now, this has been Sharp Films. I'll see you next time.